Hello everyone and welcome back to Real Solar System Interstellar with Exoplanets in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In the previous video I tried to attach myself to that asteroid and failed. It just sort of bounced off and we couldn't actually claw it. We do have a claw here. It is a small claw. I mean, it's a regular sized claw. It's just small compared to the things that we're working with here. But yeah, we weren't able to attach ourselves to it. So I don't know if there's some problem with the RSS asteroids or whether... Uh, I was just doing it wrong. I, nobody in the comments, th th there was a suggestion about colliders, but that didn't quite work because we were bouncing off of it. Uh, so I didn't get a firm idea of what might be going wrong. I'll try one more time, but then we're going to go back to investigating the various engines available in KSP Interstellar because I didn't complete my catalog of those. And then of course, once I finish that catalog, I'm going to decide on certain architectures that would be suitable for different eras of uh, futuristic space flight and try to create vehicles based on that. Because we've got engines, what we don't have is like the chassis. We don't have the, the structure that holds the engines in a sensible way. Uh, you could use all, a whole bunch of procedural parts, you can use a whole bunch of random stuff, but I want to make parts that look a little bit better and actually design the ships properly. And we want like a ship for, you know, like the near future and then the far future and then the really crazy future, etc. So that sort of idea. And then maybe I'll make uh, interchangeable parts for each of those. Uh, but it's a long-term plan and everything, and I do have to take a look at the near future and far future mods to see what they can contribute as well. But okay, so here we are approaching the asteroid very slowly, right? Very modest speed here. It does sort of jump around a bit. It doesn't let us, like, target the center of mass right now. And this is a class A asteroid. This is the smallest asteroid available. It is already captured into Earth orbit. Maybe it was just the particular location that I chose to attach myself at. I don't know. I swear the asteroid was looking different before, too. I'm pointing directly at the target, but it's off here because... Because if you're further than 200 meters, it's going to be off. And that's another problem. If the diameter of the asteroid is more than 200 meters, we're not actually going to be getting a right sense of it. We also have to be sort of tangent to the surface, which on this approach we currently aren't. Okay, well that's very slow. And... Approximately tangent to that particular surface. At least that little part of it, assuming that the mesh is consistent with the visual. Now it isn't. We're going through it. That's not ideal. <laughs> That's not ideal. Here the mesh is not matching. Now we bumped into it though. Okay, so the mesh is down there somewhere. But what what's the tangent angle to it? But you can see that the distance is still more than 200 meters. So that's a bit of a problem. We can target the center of mass right now. But... I'm trying to move myself forward, but it's actually moving me sideways. For some reason. We can't see the real surface or real collider, so... I'm just going to point at the center of mass and hope. Weird things are happening when we get close to the surface. Here we go again. Nah, it bounces off there. So the collider is right there now. It's not inside. But my, my supposition right now is that we can't claw it because we're more than 200 meters away from it, from the center of it. And the clawing only works if you're within 200 meters. So basically, because they made all the asteroids in in RSS this size or larger, because this is a class A, none of them are clawable, and certainly not landable because they have no intrinsic gravity. They're still vessels, as far as the game is concerned. So, yeah. So they're 
basically rendered unusable. We need smaller asteroids in in RSS because if this is a class A one and it's this big and that makes it more than 200 meters in diameter or radius, uh, it's yeah more than 200 in radius, then it's not useful. None of them are useful. I think that's the situation. So uh, for those who don't know, there's a render range at 2.25 kilometers, but there's also another functional range at 200 meters. And you'll see sometimes, especially in real solar system, that the target indicator will change at 200 meters or jump around before you get to 200 meters. And that's because there's a certain numerical inaccuracy that occurs beyond 200 meters. And so the thing that you dock to or claw to has to be within 200 meters before you get a real read. I think sometimes like people using MechJeb's docking computer, uh, there's an issue with that using that beyond 200 meters as well. But anyway, yeah, we can't do this, I don't think. So I'll just leave it here. Uh, I have to go into a different save. This is the save that's a uh, science sandbox, so it has the tech tree, but that means that we don't have all the engines unlocked. So I have to go into the pure sandbox save to continue our exploration of the KSP interstellar engines. Okay, so where we had left off in our catalog was with the Sage and Surge engines. The Surge being a less technologically advanced version of the Sage, the Sage using antimatter, the Surge just mere fusion. Uh, but after that we have uh, mining auger and then I don't have any idea how the mining stuff works. That's gotta be a whole other topic. We're just covering the engines here. Liquid core reactor engine, it's not too much better than Inerva, but it is better. We can see an ISP of 1527. Right now we have the Lanter engine. That's sort of in the same area, but it only has a vacuum ISP of 1050. Uh, same sort of thrust. So we sort of see the nearly 3000 meters per second there. If we take the liquid core nuclear reactor, that's 4500, though it takes a lot longer to burn through all the fuel, uh, as expected, because it's more efficient. And yeah, the, the trouble is that uh, it is a thing that is melting. <laughs> Inner cylindrical wall that naturally melts at high temperatures, but cooling on the outside of the cylinder ensures that the fuel does not melt through. That's nice. Uh, but some radioactive products can escape to the propellant, leading to a ban on operating this engine inside or pointing towards the atmosphere of Kerbin or Earth. So. Uh, yeah, that was the thing that I had in a previous episode where I guess I was pointing the thrust at Earth and therefore the engine did not work. So that is a feature of KSP Interstellar. You can't point the engine at Earth uh, if it's spewing radioactive material. I guess that's a good thing. And so after that, um, I think that'll work as intended. But uh, to be honest, we, do, we have seen that the Delta V figures inside the... VAB are not always correct, so I'm gonna take it outside to just make sure that we have the right numbers there. Well, see, now, of course, that's because it doesn't operate in the atmosphere, so we'll pop it off uh, in orbit. Okay, now it's got delta V figures. And Sometimes those delta figures do change when we ignite the engine, so we'll try to ignite it and see. Pointing prograde, it shouldn't be pointed at Earth. Okay, it builds up. It takes some time to build up, but it does go to the number that we were expecting. And waste heat is accumulating, so probably we need some radiators. But all right. That's that one. So liquid metal cooled reactor. That's just a reactor that we'd have to attach to something. Lithium air battery. Um, okay, it generates kilowatt hours. Mach effect drive. Well, now that's suspicious, isn't it? That's very suspicious. That's how much ISP? A hundred million? How does that even work? Vacuum plasma. A hundred million is definitely out of the question, isn't it? Mix some, I mean, reactionless thrust. I mean, reactionless thrust is sort of magical. 
Okay, so that's the Mark Effect Drive. Five tons. Um, what propellant do we need for it? Propellant name. Va uh, quantum Vacuum. I mean, of course, it's reactionless, so it shouldn't have any propellant. Um, it only has that as an uh, option for propellant. Uh, and how do we get Quantum Vacuum? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in theory, that just exists, right? Here it says engine ISP 5000, though. There's a chemical one with 100 millinewtons that gets 5000, and then this is 5000. I'm not sure even how to get this ridiculous 100 million thing. It only says vacuum plasma. Which in theory is just outside, but let's see, vacuum, just in case, you know. Okay, well they're all vacuum, plasma. Okay, well vacuum plasma, there's this other questionable thing, electrodeless Lorentz force plasma thruster. But that at least has a reasonable thingamajig there, ISP. With a thrust measured in kilonewtons and an ISP of 11,213. Right. You can go to Leif Val, Tyler, and Paul. Uh, okay. Not, not really where we're going, but... Hmm... Alright, so... Yeah, we can't pick up... Then this actually runs in liquid hydrogen. So, it's not... It's not vacuum plasma. Let's just put this on... That gets 28,000 in two hours. Did we test this one already? Uh, it's been a while since I did a video with these engines. I'll have to review my own videos to figure out what the heck went on. Uh, but uh, the reason being that I actually had a trip and during the, uh, for, for the videos during the trip, I just decided to do RP2000 and KSB2. So that's why I haven't done one of these in a little bit. But okay. Yeah, I'll just review. That should have already happened, so... Hmm, okay, let's take this outside and see what happens with this Mach Effect Drive. I can't figure out how to get any additional vacuum plasma for it, so... Okay, well, we are in orbit. I don't know where vacuum plasma is. But... We can point prograde. I'll just throw up now. We're not pointing the thrust at anything. There's no thrust. <laughs> maybe it's just... Maybe it's just goofy. It says Interstellar RCS 100 million though. But I don't know where the RCS is supposed to come out of. Deploy. Okay, well let's deploy. I'll, I'll click both deploys. I don't even know what's deploying. It doesn't appear to be an animation. There is stage time 49 seconds. I don't know where that's coming from. Well, the Mach Effect Drive is about as useful as I thought it would be. It does have an electric engine controller. Maybe we just didn't have enough power, but it didn't even start. May okay, so maybe we need a reactor with it. Um, let's try this liquid metal cooled reactor, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if it'll generate enough. Um, and then we need a generator. Okay, well that's quite an ensemble. But it still doesn't say anything. Eight minutes of burn time though, somehow. I don't know if this is the best reactor to use or anything. Um, thermal power generator is not connected to a power source. Is this thing not a power source? Maybe I should just use a regular reactor. Oh, maybe it just it directly generates electrical power. Yeah, 
Yeah, I guess the reactor already generates electrical power. So we don't need the thermal generator. Now this seems to be producing 0.2 kilonewtons, it says. Now 1 kilonewton sometimes. But down here it's not saying that. Not down here it's saying 100 millinewtons, which was the chemical engine bit, wasn't it? Let me say deploy, deploy here. We're producing a lot of waste heat. We don't have the radiators yet. The reason I don't put the radiators is to see if we need the radiators. And in this case we do, I think. But we're not really increasing our orbit at all. At this thrust level, our thermal power is balanced. And we probably won't generate too much waste heat, but we're not generating a whole lot of thrust. Yeah, I don't like the idea of the mock effect drive anyway, and we're not getting anything out of it right now. Probably not gonna touch it. Magnetic nozzle need, needed to be paired with other things. Magnetic scoop uh, for charged particles. We sort of saw with the Bussard ramjet sort of idea. I don't. I wonder why the shroud stays like that though. Guess that's okay. But that's more for collecting stuff. Not really an engine, part of an engine configuration. Maybe does the magnetic scoop like collect quantum vacuum? <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. A reactor, a nuclear saltwater rocket engine. Okay, that seems to get pretty high ISP. 7,000 to 9,000 and plenty of thrust. Lots and lots of thrust. Pretty heavy, 20 tons. But the propellant is nuclear salt water. How do we pack nuclear salt water? Seems like these radioactive fuel containers. Nuclear salt water. There we go, 5,827 meters per second in one minute. I think that might be a little bit OP for this. We can scale it down. Or not. No, we can't scale it down. We can scale it up. <laughs> we can't scale it down. Uh, I assume this is a do not point at Earth. Yeah, not allowed to operate in Kerbin's atmosphere or low orbit at all. Um, let's just make sure that has the thrust indicated outside. Oh, let me launch first. But this could be suited to much heavier payloads, so that's nice. It said not in low orbit, so in theory it's not going to be able to work down here, but it's saying that it's got the right delta V. Okay, ignition. Uh, yeah, not allowed too near the home world, so yeah, can't use it right now, but all right, let, let's just send it to a higher orbit and see. Okay, this will be beyond geosynchronous orbit. Now it works with immense thrust. Look at that, 7 G's. You hardly ever see that with anything called nuclear. Okay. Nice plume too. Interesting stuff. Very uh, very radioactive-ish considering all the green coming out. Definitely radioactive particles. All right. All right, so that was the nuclear salt water engine. And next up, open cycle gas core engine. Also, probably not possible to use that close to Earth, but a nice look to it. Nice look to it. Uh, some effort at shielding, I guess, here. I don't know what that is otherwise. But, okay, and what kind of delta V do we get here? Well, it's not using... Well, let's see, if we pump up the hydrogen, then we've got the 14,000. Over two hours, so it's not as high thrust. It's got 87 kilonewtons, 7,000 seconds of ISP. And let's see, can it be used in low orbit? 
It cannot operate while under the influence of acceleration either from gravity or the surface when accelerating at more than 0.2 g. Inside or pointing towards the atmosphere of, again, carbon. But um, I guess we can use it in low orbit then though. Okay, ignition, and yes, it does ignite. Lots of delta V, not a huge amount of thrust. But okay. That works. And the engine itself looks good, so that's nice. Okay, so that was the open cycle gas core nuclear engine. We have a receiver, rece a transceiver, transceiver, centrifuge ring that will produce... Produce what exactly? Uh, well, oxygen, clean water? Uh, okay. Oh wait, no, there's charged particles, deuterium, lithium, probably some of this stuff. Various isotopes and antimatter, so okay. Uh, transceiver, transceiver, okay, yep, yeah, right. Transceiver, receiver, fusion reactor, reactor, containment, containment, radiator, 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 uh, nope, that's uh, rover adapter gas, rover adapter liquid, rover adapter super, okay, uh, radiator, radiator, reactor, battery, drill, generator turbojet i'm gonna lay off of any jets or atmospheric things same with this ramjet radiator solar cell um i tried one of those that's enough for me um solar panel drill fusion drive okay now we're talking now this does this fusion drive need uh, antimatter it just fits uh antimatter thing it doesn't seem to We've got 81,000, so we don't seem to need an additional reactor. Right now it's running off of the hydrogen, right? God, there's a lot of switch windows. There's a solid hydrogen thing here too. Next fusion mode. So there's multiple fusion modes. That one gets even more, but it's in 23 years. This is 16 years. That's not good either. <laughs> uh... 16 years is so far the best we can do right now. Does get a million seconds of ISP. Catalyzed fusion drive. Really, really heavy, 90 tons. I think it's using the solid hydrogen. Let me dump the liquid hydrogen here. Yeah, it's not using this stuff at all. It's just using the solid hydrogen here. Yeah. But it doesn't seem to be using it very quickly. Or is this lying? I just perusing these can't see anything about thrust at all. Oh, well, up here it says 2600 though. So if it's got 2600 kill needs the thrust it should be going faster than that let's see what it does outside maybe we're missing something it seems to have antimatter built in as well okay out here right now it seems to have a hour and 27 minute burn time but our um our delta v is going i thought i had locked the tank oh i guess i unlocked that tank okay our delta v is going down because we were taking on board the liquid hydrogen but now that's stopped. Okay, well, let's see about where this works like this. Mesh-wise, it's a fancy-ish drive, but the uh, textures... This part could do with some work. The white part here. Well, I'm sort of pointed at the surface. Let me ignite. Shouldn't be a problem. This is, like, super advanced. It's not firing nuclear stuff at things. Well, I mean, we're firing it away anyway. That's a lot of thrust weight ratio, huh? More than one. That's pretty nifty. 93,000 meters. Uh-oh. 
Okay, I think we probably needed a radiator. Uh, let, let me just try that again to verify. I didn't have the information. I wasn't looking at the information, so let's see. Yeah, the waste heat accumulates really, really fast. Yep, that's what it was. Alright, alright. We'll revert that, but that works. Highly advanced, hopefully high in the tech tree. So, that was the Varys Antimatter Catalyzed Fusion Drive. 1.8 million ISP. Transmitter, Z-Pinch Fusion Engine, I've already tested out separately. That does work, it's set up is basically like this. We've got a liquid helium tank and then the fusion engine. That's just a control core at the top. And I think that got what we see here, but let's just double check. Yep, works just fine. No problems. Could use a radiator. But basically as indicated in the VAB. So Z-Pinch done. RCS, reactor, receiver, 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 receiver. Pebble bed reactor, phase array, phase array, transceiver, transceiver, plasma nozzle. I think we've already explored that in combination with things, right? We do need something else for it, or is that just the magnetic nozzle? It's an uh, alternative to the thermal rocket nozzle. So let's just put a sort of standard reactor with it. Molten salt reactor, fairly basic. Okay, so now it's got a propellant window liquid hydrogen which is what we've got loaded and it gets 2000 meters per second which is worse than the lanter which is sort of about the same as uh, Nerva can we do with a smaller reactor? that might help a little bit, it hurts the thrust but it increases the delta V So right now it's basically getting the same as Nerva with this plasma nozzle. So I don't know why it's so fancy, but maybe if it uses... I mean, it can use certain things that I wouldn't expect from a Nerva. But I'm just going to compare the hydrogen thing, and there it's not that great. Maybe some of the others will do better, but usually hydrogen is pretty good. Okay, so plasma nozzles like that, reactor and then nozzle. Not going to explore that much more. Plasma wake field accelerator engine. Okay, it's got a hundred thousand seconds of ISP. Tens of billions of electron volts per meter. Interesting. It can use hydrogen. Waste heat, who knows? It doesn't seem to need a separate reactor. But it takes a day, but then it delivers 262,000. So, okay, let's see. Let's see what it does, actually. Oh, well, at the moment it says 415 years, which is not great. Hopefully when we ignite that changes. Okay, ignition. Ignition isn't happening. Maybe it needs something else. I think it probably needs a reactor and it just wasn't making that clear. Sometimes the engines make it clear in the in the VAB because they don't get any delta V without it. Other times they seem to get delta V but they actually need the reactor. So I think this needs a reactor. Okay, so here we have the molten salt reactor, a thermal power generator, and then the plasma wake field accelerator engine. Let's see how this works now. It has, it says it has 193,000 meters per second in one day and 21 hours. Will that match up with it in flight? Okay, it has substantially changed here. So 193,000 when we throttle up, it gets less 
that might be the waste heat. I mean, the waste heat is accumulating, but ultimately we see it stabilizes at 9,652 meters per second, a lot less. And then it's a six hour, now seven hour burn time going up as I guess the weight heat goes up four kilonewtons. We would, we might get better if we have the radiators, but mainly probably we need better, uh, a better reactor and that would be the key, I think. Maybe different propellants would be better? I don't know. Let's see. Here we're using the liquid oxygen which we have on board. That gets a lot less delta V and that's pretty much as expected. And we don't have anything else on board that we can use, so... Yeah, well, definitely not what it said in the VAB. And it's still a very long burn time because of the low thrust, and that thrust has definitely diminished over time. Alright, so plasma wake field, accelerator engine... bit questionable. There. Okay, radial vasomir engine. Well, they're supposed to be radial. I feel like these probably need a reactor. Um, but right now it's saying it's getting delta V, so maybe we'll try it first and then put on the reactor just just for completeness sake. Interesting, it claims to have thrust all the way down here. And a fair amount at that. Does that really mean that... Would they actually work down here? <laughs> now I'm wondering. Uh, let's say I do a different cheat here. Let's say a hack gravity, because right now, normally when it doesn't work at sea level, it doesn't show anything. Uh, but right now it's saying that it gets 0.5. Okay, so then it gets 4.86, it says, so all right. Yeah, I thought so, it was lying. All right, uh, let's just reset the gravity there, okay. So let's just set orbit. Okay, now it still doesn't have anything because we don't have the reactor, right? Seems that way. It's got liquid hydrogen as the propellant. That's not a problem. It gets ISP like that, but okay, let's get the reactor on. Maybe it'll lift off with a reactor. That seems a little bit OP. Let's just get a basic molten salt reactor and of course a generator. Uh, I don't know strictly speaking if it needs a generator. We'll see. I, I expect these are electric. Magnetic nozzle. Hmm. No, interstellar electric engines, so generator. Okay, 0.84. <laughs> I'm going for it. Okay, uh, let's let's shrink this. I don't know if I can shrink it enough. Okay, contrary to all expectations, this is currently saying that this is an SSTO, right? I don't think so, but all right. Let let's see how this goes. Uh, now it's backed off. Now it says eight hours burn time and 0.08 thrust weight ratio. That makes a little bit a little bit more sense, but not a huge amount of sense. Um, yeah, so we won't try the ground test here. But maybe with a powerful enough reactor, who knows? Maybe that's reactor dependence. Let's see. Well they're they've lit. They're each apparently getting about 4.8 kilonewtons after revving up. No sounds and it's a weird purple wavy thing. It's sort of two-dimensional wavy thing. Okay, but they do work. 2,900 seconds of ISP. Basically, they're souped up ion engines. If you've got a reactor with them. 
So that's an option if you can't bear with ion engines, but need something with that kind of efficiency. Though, hopefully we can scale down the reactor, because that's quite heavy. It's good that I can run off of various fuels, though. We're running off of hydrogen. Okay, so that's Vasimir. Radial Vasimir in particular. Now, of course, the I think it's the near future pack that has Vasimir as well, so we'll have to see how that one works. Vista Fusion Engine. Okay. This has a built-in radiator, so does it have a built-in... Reactor? Well, let's once again see. Oh, just fits too. This is a good shape. Let's remember five meters. Anyway, um... Right now it's getting delta V. And... That delta V is not coming from the hydrogen here. It is presumably coming from the hydrogen here. This has hydrogen, but this hydrogen does... Okay, this has enough hydrogen. It can't use more hydrogen. It can't use more hydrogen. We would have to add more tritium and deuterium in order to use the hydrogen there, I guess. And... Yeah, it even has all three listed as the propellants right there. That's some gimbling, too. It's got the little tiny thruster sound. But it's working fine, alright. Fair thrust, too. Okay, so that one works. And we're close to the end now. We've got this Vasimir engine. Oh, it makes a sound just when I pull pull it out of there. Um, max power consumption two gigawatts. Okay, well let's let's get the molten salt reactor. It's not gonna be two gigawatts, but let's just get it for comparison's sake. Okay, and if we load up on hydrogen, we get some apparent delta V here. Three hours, thirty thousand meters per second. This runs at a much higher ISP than the radial ones, right? Those were saying 3,000 or so. This is 10 times that. Let's see if it really gets that. Let's not ask about why it gets that. Let's just see if it gets that. It hasn't changed. It's still two days up here. So, crawl up. Oh. Its plume is totally whacked. And the delta V has changed. So maybe with a different reactor it'll get better. But right now it's getting the same ISP as the radial ones. One hour, 3,000 meters per second, 8 kilonewtons. Basically like the radial ones, except the plumes are weird. No, I mean the plume is weird. Okie dokie. Okay, radiator, receiver, and... Z-Pinch Fusion Aerospike Cheat Edition. Why do we even need cheat editions of things? I don't even see why it's a cheat edition, but there's enough stuff around here that we don't need a special cheat edition for something, uh, right? Anyway, I'll pass on the cheat edition, and that means I have completed the survey of KSB Interstellar engines. I myself will have to review my own videos uh, to sort of create a little uh, table, a little spreadsheet of details that are relevant to me, uh, and use that for reference. But there we have it. We, we've done all of them, and, and now we can make an informed decision about what kind of uh, futuristic spaceships we intend to make. So with that, thank you for watching. hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.